Welcome to Tuesday's Tech Tip from GLVAR MLS. In this tip, I will show you how to use the Hot Sheets. Hot Sheets are a great tool to keep an eye on listings, and they are very similar to the Market Watch, but they are much more customizable. Whereas the Market Watch is more visible, the Hot Sheet is more flexible, making it much more complex in trying to set them up. To start, you have one hot sheet per property type, and a default for each one is every area within the MLS. Like the Market Watch, you probably don't want to keep track of all locations throughout the MLS. You are probably only interested in your areas, or at least your type of listings. Also, notice the drop down box. Here you can change the time frame. You have a few more options for your time frame on hot sheets compared to the market watch. You have your typical time frames such as 24 hours, today, 3 day, and 7 day, but you have three other ones. New only means that you will only see the new ones since the last time you logged in. So if you have been logged into Matrix for 40 minutes, this will show you only the ones that are new within that 40 minute period. This session, this session is probably one that you may want to use. The initials for this session are TS. You could think of it as a timestamp because it will remember the time from this session until the time that you run this, ser this session again in the future. So if you are using the hot sheet under this session, matrix remembers the time, then when I log out and log back in at a future date within 30 days, I will see all the listings dating back to the last time I used this session. And custom. Custom will allow you to pick your time frame as long as it's within the past 30 days. Now, let me show you how to create or customize your own hot sheets. There are thousands of combinations to use hot sheets, so allow me to show you just a few simple ones. If I want to keep track of a certain community that I work with on a daily basis, I would first use the Customize button. In here, I can manage my hot sheets. I am given one hot sheet per property type. I can have a total of 10 hot sheets. So, this means that I can have more than one property type. But first, let me focus on the residential one. I would choose residential, and then I would click on edit criteria. In here, I can choose the criteria or areas that I want. Notice that I can choose the change type. If I don't choose any of them, then I will see all listings that have changed to one of these options. If I only want to see new listings and price decreases, then I would hold down the control button and click on new listings and price decrease. Then let's say I only care to see single family residential listings that are detached. I would just choose single family and detached. And then I only want listings that are in the community name of Anthem. I'm going to choose all three of those Anthem communities. And then I am satisfied with this. This is what my first hot sheet will be, so I will save it. Since I changed the criteria and I saved it, I think it would be a good idea to rename it. I'll call it SFR Detached in Anthem. This simply just means single family residential detached in the communities of Anthem. So now when I see my hot sheet in the future, if I change the time period to let's say three days back and then I click on it, in the last three days, I can see that there are five new listings and one price decrease in that community name. So that's my first example. Now here's a second example. Let's say I want to customize another one. I want a second residential one, 
but you remember I used my one residential and changed it to this one. But if you also remember, I can have up to 10 of them. So that means I could add another residential. So just use the add button, choose residential, and save it. Now I have a second residential one. I'll need to edit this criteria. Go in, and this time I want to see all change types. And I want to see all property types. If it's in this certain area, I want to see it. I don't care what, what it changed to or what property type. If it's in one of my favorite zip codes that I work with every day, I want to see it. I want to know about it because that's where I live and that's where I do majority of my work. So now I can just come down and hit save. And since I changed it, just like I did before, I might want to rename it and save it. So I'm pretty confident I know what that one is. But I don't want it at the very bottom, so I'm gonna move it up and put it next to my other one. While I'm here, I might have an idea that I wanna create several more residential ones, but I only have 10, so I could get rid of, let's say, multiple dwelling, because you know I don't work with those too much, so I can delete it. And then same thing with vacant land and high rise. Just clean up some that I don't work in. And now when I show you this one, if I use my same three day period and I click on residential for those three zip codes, for the last three days I can see all these new listings, price changes back on market, sold, what have you for all those listings. And then finally, one last one I could do. Customize, choose the add another residential one, save it, go to edit criteria. I want the same things. Uh, I want single family, but I don't want to pick an area name or community. I want a map shape. So by going to my map search, I can just simply draw my area. And I just drew a polygon, made it really simple and fast for you, and then hit OK. So I just want to show you that you can actually do map shapes in here too, not just pick one of these property types. I could even say map shape and say all listings that are short sales, yes or no, or foreclosure commenced. The possibilities are unlimited. And then when you're done, just save it. And like I said, it's always a good option to rename it. And then rename it just so that you know what it is and hopefully you'll remember it in the future. Save it and then go back. Now you don't have to keep customizing it only if you want to add new ones or make a change to one of your existing ones. I hope this little video helps you and if you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you.